I definitely want to give a shout out to Triad Meats in Greensboro, North Carolina. That's my meat market, guys. And shout out to CJ that works there. Um, for the freshest meats in Greensboro, definitely check them out. And big ups to the folks at Very Model, the company that sent me this vacuum sealer to uh, test out and show you. But you're going to get to see it and see it in action today. And by the way, guys, this goes for 100 bucks on Amazon. Let me show you what it comes with. All right, first you got your owner's manual. You got your breakaway cord. You get this external cable. Now this is more advanced, but I'm glad it comes with it. This is for external um, containers, like like, um, like uh, plastic containers that you can uh, vacuum seal as well. You'd have to buy those containers separately, but it's good that it came with this. And finally, vacuum sealer bags. This looks like a half a gallon. Um, and it looks like about 10 in there or more, which is good because some vacuum sealers don't even give you bags. So. But of course, you can buy extra bags, or if you buy a vacuum sealer without bags, um, you can get them at your local supermarket, and of course on Amazon. You can get them in half a gallon, gallon size, whatever have you. It's probably cheaper on Amazon. That's where I get them. But I do like the fact that it does come with a few, like 10, because I got a vacuum sealer one time that I did a video on, and it only came with like three vacuum bags, so I appreciate that. So anywho, what is... The purpose of a vacuum sealer. The purpose of the vacuum sealer is just like a Ziploc bag, but a million times longer in freshness. So in other words, you, when you vacuum seal something, when you vacuum seal something in this, in this bag or whatever bag you have, this can stay in your freezer or deep freezer for up to a year and a half or even two years and still stay fresh. It won't get freezer burn. Whereas if you use a Ziploc, I mean, if you don't zip it up right, um, you're talking about a month to three months. And even if you zip it right, I mean, three, four months, and then you get freezer burn. But with this, it takes the guesswork out of it. It's done right every time because you seal, you see it vacuuming all out all the air. So you know it. So if it's not doing it right, you just stop and redo it. So you know it's fresh, supermarket fresh, airtight every time. Before we get to the meats, I figure I have some fun with you guys. My youngest son loves Chips Ahoy cookies. So we're going to vacuum seal some um, and just keep them for a later date. He only eats about three or four at a time. so. These could possibly get stale by the time he finishes them. But who are we kidding here? The real reason why I'm vacuum sealing them because I eat them. <laughs> now there's two ways to vacuum seal with this machine. You can just load it into here and it will catch and just start, you know, sucking the air out and, and seal it. Or you can take the top off, which I'm going to show you after this, which is more of the manual way. And, and, and you know, for the beginners, with this particular machine, I would rather you do it the second way, just so that you make sure that you got um, you got it in the right position and it's good to go. Because sometimes it'll start sealing, but it won't suck the air out. So doing it manually, you know, for your first couple of times will be better. But I'm going to just show you. Let's get a little closer. That I could do it without opening the top. So you just go like that. You go to where you can't go anymore. And then you hit, I'm going to hit dry seal. And you can start this way, it's fine, but you see how easy it is. And these cookies are good to go. So now it's sealing it. And boom. There you have it. For example, let's just say you bought a, a ribeye, right? A couple of ribeyes, because they were on sale. 
you didn't particularly want them right now. But you wanted to catch the sale and you wanted to season them up and put them in your freezer for a later date. Well, we can do that with no worries. Get your favorite seasonings and season both sides. I'll use my Evo oil spray just to keep it nice and moist. Okay, we got both sides done. All right, we got it into the bag. Now we're gonna take this part off. The top comes off with that little lever right there. We're gonna line it up. This is what it looks like when we turn it on, by the way. And no, this doesn't have an on and off button. So you put this back on like that, press it down, and make sure it's flat. All right, so we're gonna use dry seal, the last one. Look at it. Sucking all the air out, and then it's gonna end in the seal. Remember, we can put this ribeye in our freezer, deep freezer, for a year, year and a half, and we're good to go. It'll look like it was packaged by the supermarket. Usually takes about, what, 45 seconds or so, so we'll see. But mine does. And guys, remember, this is an entry-level vacuum sealer, um, but it is great. It's very easy to use for you first-time um, users of vacuum sealers, so, yeah. Now it says seal right here. Oh, you can't see it, sorry. It's flashing seal now. Okay, now it's done. So I'd say that took about a minute or so. And there you have it, guys. This will be well seasoned. All the seasoning will go through the ribeye. By the time I take it out the freezer, whenever that is, whether it be uh, two days from now or a year from now. Perfect. So you caught a sale on some chuck rolls, right? And you just wanted to pick it up season it, put it away for another time, or maybe not even another time. You just want to season it um, and vacuum seal it so that all the seasonings get all the way into your meat and maybe cook it a day or two later. That's fine as well. Now, you should always wear gloves when handling meat. Yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna add some honey garlic marinade to this bad boy. Let's pour it on there. And then I'm gonna put some of my go-to on there, which is pink salt, black pepper, and garlic. And do that to all sides. Now this is a popular uh, brand that you can find at your supermarket. I got this at my Super Walmart. It's Food Saver uh, brand, and this is a gallon bag. I wanted to use a gallon bag on this two pound chuck roast because it has to have room, you know? So it can't be too tight because it has to have room to properly seal. So you don't want it too close. And I, th I thought the half gallon would have been cutting it too close. And that wouldn't have been good for this demo, would it? <laughs> Plenty of room, guys. That's, that's about the room that you want. You got room on the sides, you got room at the top. It's perfect. Same deal guys, just take this, pull it off. A little trick that I like to do guys is I want to make sure that it's flat. So I'll give it like a little pat first. Yeah, make sure it's just lined up flat. 
and we should be good. Put the top back on, hit a click. Now since I put some marinade on there, I'm gonna hit moist vacuum and seal. But this I still could have hit dry because it's still dry. You don't see any liquids coming out. And, and if you did, that's when you really need to hit moist. Because if not, if you hit dry, the liquids will get sucked out into your machine. Not saying that it will damage it, but that's not something that you want to happen. So you really have to know which one to choose. If it's dry, hit dry. If you see liquid at this point, then I definitely would hit moist. But I'm just going to hit it now because like I said, I put liquid in there and I just want to be careful. But I, dry would have been fine too in this case. Do you see it? Sucking the air right on out. Now it's going to seal. But look, yeah, like I said, that was just, yeah, it was about the same, about a minute. And boom. See the seal right there? Perfect. Looks like it came out the grocery store. Now you can put this in your freezer. Again, year, year and a half, two days. A day, tomorrow morning. It'll be fully marinated and fresh. Whether it be tomorrow or next year and a half. We have some bacon. Sometimes we have bacon, um, we don't even cook half the pack. We just wanted, I don't know, four or five slices of bacon. And we got the whole pack left. And we may not have bacon again for the rest of the week. No problem. Nothing like meat market bacon. It's fresh. And when I say fresh, I mean fresh. They done slowed it. Never mind. And this is another gallon bag, guys. So... It probably isn't the best example, but let's just let's just hear me out. Let's say you got some bacon and um, you was at your meat market um, and it was on sale. Because my meat market, as you see, they don't put it. I guess you can request it, but if you don't say anything, they're just going to wrap it up in that paper-like material and send you on your way. And you can, you know, you can have that in your refrigerator like that. I don't know for two or three days, but it's not going to last long that way. So that would be one reason why you would vacuum seal it, but not necessarily. But let's just say you have a bunch of bacon and you have a family member, a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you want to send home with some bacon. You can put this in the vacuum sealer in a gallon bag and boom, whenever they, it'll be fresh until they open it. And when they open it, then they can put it in a Ziploc after that if they don't have a vacuum sealer to reseal it. And by the way, you can reseal these bags, by the way. You just use a scissor, cut the top where the seal is, and reseal it if there's enough room on the top. So that's another cool thing too. You see it? It's right there. I'm just going to press it down, kind of help it out like that. And, you know, as you do it, you'll know how to really work your vacuum sealer because every one of them are slightly different. Some are just easier to seal in others. So this is easy. I've, I've had some $50 vacuum sealer that was a nightmare. <laughs> so I suggest do not get a cheap vacuum sealer, please, because they're going to break fast and they're a nightmare to, to seal the first time. You, you may have to do it two or three times. Anywho, I'm going to hit dry vac. Oh, did I press it? There we go. And I'll come back so you can see. That's not going to take too long because it's already flat, so there wasn't much air in it to begin with. It's already on seal, so it won't be long now. It sounds like a jet, like I'm in a jet, like if you're sitting by the engine. <laughs> ah, done already, so that was quick. Let me show you. See? Perfect. My final example is chicken wings. 
Now, and, and by the way, there are many other examples that you can vacuum seal, but that's what I have today to show you. So the benefit of vacuum sealing chicken wings is because you're going to season them and then you're going to vacuum seal them. And when you season them and vacuum seal them, now we can pressure cook the uh, wings because they're already seasoned and they'll come out perfect, perfectly seasoned and juicy. Or we can even air fry them from frozen. Or we can thaw them out and then just air fry them as normal because they're still seasoned. You don't have to do anything else. So it gives you an option of doing it from frozen or not. But once you season it and, and vacuum seal them, you're done with the seasoning part. And they're seasoned to the bone, which is better than doing it 30 minutes before the time or whatever have you. But the key is, though, you know how chicken wings are expensive. If you catch them on sale, this way you can grab up, you know, much as you can afford and vacuum seal them and take them out as needed. All right, so let's season this, guys. Since it's already out... I'll use this honey garlic on the chicken wings. I want to see how that tastes. And we'll make these, I don't know, next Sunday. Put some of my go-to on there. Pink salt, black pepper, garlic. Put some kicking chicken in there for some spice. You can, you can, and the fun part about this, you could just go crazy because the seasoning on this, when it, when it, when it, um, you finally take it out to cook, is gonna be unbelievable. Way better than marinating for 30 minutes, an hour, six hours. Smoked paprika for coloring and flavor, and we're gonna mix all that up. All right, so they look like this, and I'm gonna put them in two half a gallon bags because. This way I don't have to worry about cooking all of them at once. Maybe I'll put maybe six in a bag or something like that. So good portion control or, you know, because I could eat six by myself. So if I feel hungry for some wings, I could just take out one bag. I'll have six or seven in there, cook them and be done. And you know what? Uh, I'll, say, I'll save these for um, the game opener of the NFL. I think... Um, I think my Giants play the Panthers, the North Carolina Panthers, uh, our first game whenever that is, and I'll save it for that. There you go. Hi right, guys, so I got six in each bag, and these are the bags it came with, so that's perfect. I, just to give you an example, I wouldn't go past eight wings, because it would start getting too crowded. You would just need a bigger bag if you wanted more, but this is perfect. So six, six is perfect for me in one shot, so if I'm cooking for two, then I'll just use both. Same deal, nothing's changed. Straighten it up. Pat it down. And put the top back on. Make sure you hear the click. And boom. So this is a perfect example here. I see a little bit of air. So I'm just going to pat it down a little. Yeah, that's perfect. So now I'm going to hit dry. I'm going to hit dry on this one. A little bit of the juices went up there. So really, I should have hit moist, but I want to show you what could happen. Now, if there was a lot of liquid in there, that would have been a problem. It was just a little. And you'll see if it got past the seal line, if it really got into your machine. So we'll see that in a second. And it didn't because that was just there for me putting the chicken in. But, see, perfectly sealed. And of course, we can look into the, well, when we're done, we'll look into the vacuum sealer and see if there's anything in there. Because we could just wipe that out. So let's do the other one. All right. Put it on there, pat it down. Make sure it's neat. Close that. Hear the click. I'm going to hit moist on this one. Just to show you the difference.
Good, I'm glad that happened. Because that didn't go through. We have to do that again. Now let's see, did it seal it? Yeah, it did. It sealed it. Good, I'm glad it did that. Because now I'm going to cut it and redo it. All right. So I'm going to cut under the seal line. Like that. So this is a little close. Let me get them down as much as possible. All right, let's try this again. Pat it down. Like that. All right. I'm looking for the click. Boom. I'm going to pat it down again. All right, that should be good. I'm going to hit moist. It's sealing right now. So you see, even if you mess up or you use one and you want to reuse it again, And just cut it and reuse it but I mean I wouldn't when I say reuse it I mean reuse it like right now like say I don't know you want to add more you, you forgot to you forgot some in the bag you can cut it add add and then reseal it all right so see it's perfect Ready for game day, guys. Guys, in a matter of like seven minutes, I did all of this. I mean, come on. Could be you. Into the deep freezer we go. All right. Just take it out the bag and boom. 